as a keyboard player, I'd have to say the main stage is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. There's so many things that you can do with a Mac computer running main stage software. It's easy to become overwhelmed, but let me show you 10 cool things that keyboard players can do with main stage. First of all, it's easy to play basic sounds, but beyond that, one of the coolest things we can do is start to add what we call a pad sound to for something like piano. And a pad sound is simply just a sound that just kind of sits there, it kind of glues everything together, but it adds a lot of depth and emotion to what you play. So that's the first thing you can do is to add a pad sound. The next thing you can do is to adjust a synth sound like that by adjusting what we call the filter. So we hear some things changing. Let me go ahead and open up this synth plugin and watch right here as I mapped this control, this knob on my MIDI control to this on-screen control. And then as we raise and open up that synth filter, it really changes the sound. That's one of the coolest things that you can do as a keyboard player with main stage. The third thing is it's good to add layers. Okay, we've already added one layer with the pad sound, but now I'm going to add a strings layer as well. So it's fun to add a lot of different layers to what you're playing. The fourth thing we can do is add effects. Here is a basic Rhodes electric piano sound. And one of the things if you were at an actual Rhodes piano, you would have two dials that control what we call tremolo. It's going to bounce the sound between left and right channels. If you're listening on headphones, you'll hear this really clearly. But I've mapped these two controls. So one controls the speed and then this one controls the intensity. But it's fun to play with that actual control like you would actually have on a real Rhodes. You can also add what we call a delay, which adds an echo to the sound. You can even go so far as to add guitar effects. We're gonna open up this pedal board and if you watch here, this is a tape delay and it's gonna add a reverse delay effect to it. So it's really changing the sound and a lot of different things you can do with effects in main stage. Fifth thing we can do is something that I really like to do and I do it really frequently and that's to use arpeggiators. So as I play a chord, it's gonna take the notes of the chord and repeat it in a rhythmic pattern. And depending on how you mix the arpeggiator, you can use it in a couple of different ways. If you mix it lower in the mix, you can just create a more texture in what you play. If you really bring it up, open up the filter, and bring it up. It gives you a really strong modern synth approach to what you're doing. The sixth thing, the sixth thing we can do is something that's so much easier to do in main stage than anywhere else. And a lot of times you're playing a song that's going to have loud sections and soft sections, and it's really helpful to set up your patches in order to accommodate those different sections and create those different dynamic levels as you go through a song. It just adds different layers of energy. Now you can certainly mix the sounds as you go through. For example, I can bring up this strings type layer by doing that, but a lot of times I don't want to fiddle too much with the mix as I'm playing, and so it's easier to just go to the next patch. And it's already set up to add more energy and volume and then I can bring it back down at the end. That's something that's really easy to set up with main stage. Seventh thing we could talk about is it's easy to get just the right sounds. If you have just a keyboard, you're locked into whatever sounds are in it. And it might not be necessarily the, the sounds that you need for your style. It might not be the sounds you need for the songs that you're playing. And so one of the good things about main stage is there, there's so many sounds out there. You can get a, a different patches to fit your style. You can even buy song specific patches like this one that I set up for a really common song and it's just set up to go right through this song. Um, but you can get exactly what you need. You can even get third party plugins that are going to emulate some of the best quality instruments in the world, like the best uh, grand pianos or the most expensive vintage synthesizers you can play. You can set that all up in software without spending a whole lot of money. Okay, uh, Number eight, we can talk about it's easy to split the keyboard any way you want it. One example of what we might do here is with a bass sound. 
for right now I have a bass across the whole keyboard and I have a road sound across the whole keyboard. Okay. What I wanna do is just to be able to play the bass only down here and the roads only up here. So the way we do that is we go into the channel strips. I'm gonna set up the bass sound with the layer editor to end on this B. So I press click for learn, and then that key, and now the bass is limited to that range. And then I go to the roads and I click low key and I press the next key up. And you can see up here how now these two sounds occupy different ranges on the keyboard. Here's bass. And I can split it that way. It's really easy to do. Another example is if you're playing a lead sound, which is monophonic, you could only play one note at a time, but you want to play another layer with it where you can play multiple notes. Here I'm going to change this one so it's going to end uh, right here. I'm also going to change it so I can play low without it sounding low. I'm going to transpose it up an octave. And then I'm going to change this layer to start here. Now I can play. Then I can hold out full chords down here. Okay, so that's easy to set up different parts of your keyboard to play differently. Number nine is super easy to alter your sounds and get completely different sounds or just to tweak the ones you need just a little bit. Here's one, if we listen to it, it comes on right away and it, help, and it holds out. If we go into this, we can change what we call the envelope and we can change it so it comes on slower. Or we can change it so that it cuts off right away. So there's a lot of different ways to mess with your sounds and change it and get exactly what you need from the sounds that you have. Number 10 is pretty cool. You can play multiple notes by just pressing one key. Let me give you a demonstration. A couple different things going on here. One, we have an arpeggiated layer where we put in an arpeggiator plugin as a MIDI effect. Here we're using what we call a chord trigger where if you play one note, it actually plays these four notes. And if we were to dig into it, we would find that it's a major seventh chord. But you can set it up to be anything that you want. You could play octaves, you could play just a couple of notes, um, but that's a really easy way to get a, a big sound with not playing a whole lot. Now, a lot of these things we can actually do on more traditional synthesizers, but there's a couple of things that make this super accessible with MainStage. And one of the things is that we have this big computer screen and it's easy to see exactly what we need. When you're working with just an internal keyboard, you're working with a small screen, and it's really hard to get to change uh, all the things that you want to be able to change. And having the computer screen is a huge advantage. Um, so that's one of the things that, that we like about MainStage. Another thing is that to get the kind of sounds that we're talking about, you would have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get different keyboards, different synthesizers, maybe a piano, all that kind of stuff, guitar pedals, all that. It's all uh, using stuff that's either in the software or a lot of times using equipment that you already have. And so it's maximizing a lot of that. So I really love MainStage. I wanna help you get started with it. And if you're wondering what you need, I have just the perfect resource for you. And it's called Getting Start Get Started with MainStage. And it's a new mini course that I've put together. Uh, if you go to getstartedwithmainstage.com, you can sign up for that. It's a free mini course and just uh, go ahead and sign up for that and get started with it. Um, it's going to show you um, the, the types of equipment that you need uh, and be really specific and really clear about that. It's going to show you where you can get that equipment. It's going to show you how to hook it all up. And it's also going to show you how to make connections within MainStage itself. So you can actually go from square one all the way to playing your first notes with MainStage. And that's at getstartedwithmainstage.com. I think that'd be really helpful for you. So you want to check that out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.